Foxtrot. Now what I want to do, now that we're at 200 feet, we're at 68 knots, what does a good pilot do next? They've made the field, now they want to slow down as much as possible to minimum controllable airspeed. And on my way here to film this video session, I ran into two instructors, I asked them both. They were very good, they knew that VSO, which is the stalling speed of a Cessna Skyhawk in a landing configuration, and the slang to remember that is stuff out, or some other word like stuff, when you put all the stuff out, like flaps down, gear down, you're in a dirty configuration. They all said 40 knots, and that was good. So I'm gonna say, to be safe, we're gonna stay just above that. We're gonna do this exercise at 44 knots. Okay, so now pause the video and convert this into meters per second again, re-looking at part A to see your conversion. And I will show you my answer. 44 knots is equal to 23.64 meters per second. Okay, good. Now the wind. The wind is huge. This is one mistake people make. Private pilots on their check ride get all flustered and they want to hurry up and pick a field. You know, take your time, breathe, count to 10, and look around, look at flags, look at smoke, look at the lake to see how the waves are moving, and pick a good field where you can land into the wind, no fences, no ruts, no animals, no barns. So, you know, decide whether your wind is from the west to the east or from the north to the south or whatever. You want to land into the wind. That can save lives. And in a lot of NTSP reports, people do it wrong. They end up with a tailwind. So I'm going to do two examples here. One, incorrectly with a tailwind. Second one, properly with a headwind. And I'll show you the energy difference and the physics numbers. So let's say we have a wind of 20 knots. We'll make it a little stiffer than average. A little stiffer wind, that way we see a dramatic effect in the numbers. But we definitely have 20 knot winds all the time here. On my private pilot check ride, I think it was 14 gusting 23. That was pretty challenging for a private pilot check ride, but it was super fun. Okay, so we have to think of ground speed. Ground speed, what does that mean? It means your airspeed plus or minus your wind, your wind speed. If you land with a tailwind, you're going to add them to get your ground speed. If you land with a headwind, you subtract them, like here. So here, if you have 44 knots of airspeed minus a 20 knot headwind, you're gonna land with 24 knots of ground speed. If you get it screwed up and you choose your field wrong and you land with a tailwind, you have a 20 knot wind and a 44 knot airspeed, you're gonna end up with a ground speed of 64 knots and 64 knots compared to 24 knots can mean life versus death if you have an actual engine failure someday. So let's see what happens here. So your, your 44 knots of airspeed is in meters per second. Your next homework now is to pause the video and calculate this 20 knots of wind in meters per second. And I'll show you my answer here. I'll use W, it's a vector. So we'll put a little arrow on top. Our wind is gonna turn out to be 10.28 meters per second. So G, part G, the pilot incorrectly jugs, judges it, incorrectly lands with tailwind. So their ground speed, G, I'm just changing notation, I'll stick with GS, ground speed, equals the air speed plus the wind. So that's gonna be, in metric units now, is 23.64 meter per second, plus our wind, 10.28 meter per second. That comes out to be 33.9 meters per second. Now, what do I wanna compare? Your, your instructor pilots are always talking about managing your energy, get as slow as possible. So clearly we want the energy. And we're on the ground now, we're six inches above the ground, we're about to land, so we can just say the potential energy is zero. We have zero height. So our total energy is simply equal to only the kinetic energy, one-half mv squared. So we have one-half, we're still at max gross weight, we've burned some fuel so we're less than that, but for this exercise we're, we'll say we're still at 1159.1 total kilograms, 2550 pounds, times 33.9 meter per second squared. And the key here is this is the velocity squared. This is, you know, 34 knots squared. This comes out to be 667 kilojoules. K 
kilo meaning times 10 to the third, or 667000 joules, 667,000. So we're definitely a lot less energy than we had before with our one point something megajoules. We've got rid of a lot of energy, but we could have done a lot better. If the pilot correctly landed with a headwind, part H, pilot correctly lands with a headwind, they did a good job, they took their time, correctly lands, lands with headwind. They took their time, they looked at flags, smoke, etc., and they, they picked a good field that had a headwind. Now their ground speed is equal to their airspeed minus the wind, 24.64 meter per second, minus 10.28 meter per second. You can already see this is going to be a lot less. This is like in the low teens only. This is 13.3 meter per second. So some of you can already see these two, and when you square them, the effect becomes much more, right? So let's get our total energy now. Our kinetic energy for the better pilot is one half mass V squared, one half. We're still at 1159.1 kilograms, 13.3 meter per second. So pause the video again and crunch this number and compare to this guy. And it should blow your mind and hopefully you'll say, wow. And I got 102.5 kilojoules. So look at that. 100 compared to 670. You know, a factor of six. Six times more energy while landing. This can mean the, the matter of life and death because where does all that energy go? The energy is going to be a little bit into the friction of the wheels and the grass field when you land, but a lot of it, the research shows in the NTSB, the National Transportation and Safety Board Accident Studies, shows that sometimes the nose wheel hits, the prop strikes, and the passengers get thrown into the dash or thrown into the yoke. Well, think of how much violence you'll have with 667,000 joules of energy throwing the passengers into the, into the dash and into the yoke compared to only 100,000. You know, a lot less energy could mean minor injuries here compared to major injuries, paralysis, or death from a simple thing like making sure you're landing with a headwind compared to a tailwind.